Today I want to help you guys get through a tough time. I've been having ups and downs in my life. I want to title this episode, the episode of ups and downs. Let's figure out how to get through some of these tough things that we're dealing with. Let's figure out how to manage some pain. Let's figure out how to let go. Let's figure out how to focus. I want to start the podcast off with a quote from my book, Care Package. Care Package is a book that talks about healing, talks about letting go of pain. The quote goes like this. When we go through madness, it feels like it will last forever, but nothing is forever. The pain is temporary too. It will fade. I want to read it one more time. When we go through madness, it feels like it will last forever, but nothing is forever. The pain is temporary too. It will fade. If you're going through ups and downs in life, you have to remember that the pain you're feeling is temporary. Although the pain you're feeling matters, it's important. We're not going to dis discard it and act like it doesn't exist. We're not going to act like your pain is not real. We have to be mindful. Step number one towards healing that current pain is to realize it's temporary. It will fade. It won't be as powerful as it is right now. You know, I'll share a little story with you guys about what I'm going through, uh, what I've been dealing with. Now, first and foremost, I think my life is okay. I think my life is good. Uh, I think that I am living in my purpose. I think that I'm focused uh, on my health, on my, on my work, on my, on my life, on my connections, relationships. I think, I think I have a good life. That's my opinion. I'm not in any type of depression. Uh, I have all the feelings that everyone has, though. You know, I have the extreme excitement, happiness. I have anger. I'm upset sometimes. Um, I feel sadness. I would say 80% of the day, I'm very, um, I'm even. I'm not, uh, you know, I don't spike. My emotions don't spike. I'm very even. 80, 80, 80 to 85% of the day, I'm very even. Uh, we'll just call it even kill. Uh, that's. I just wanted to describe my my temperament so you could got so you guys could get a perspective of where I'm at. So I recently I had to move out of my apartment. I was living in Scottsdale, Arizona, and the energy it it's crazy how it happened because the energy in there was perfect. It was creative. It was vibrant. It allowed me to to be myself. And then all of a sudden I was in a healthy environment, and then all of a sudden the healthy environment changed, and it changed be, not because of me. It changed because of the other people in the environment. It changed because of things outside of me that I couldn't control. And so when I realized that the environment went from healthy to toxic, then I had to ask myself two questions. One, what did I contribute? And I was being completely honest, self-awareness on 10. I did not contribute to the toxicity of that situation. Then I had to ask myself, what can I do? Can I change these external people? And I cannot change external people. So I had to change myself. So I had to leave the environment. I had to leave to save myself. I'm an empath. You're probably an empath too. I don't feel like empaths, imp, an empath is a, a, an empathetic person. Typically a person who is highly sensitive to their surroundings. An empath is a person who's highly sensitive to their surroundings, to what may be said to them, to what they feel, to what they see. What makes me an empath is that when I walk in a place, I smell it deep. I smell it. I can see the energy of the people in the place. I can see the emotion on people's faces. I could tell if someone's a dangerous person, I can see, no, stay away from that person. But if someone's got that good energy, they're like, oh yeah, oh, I'm enjoying life. I know. Hey, go talk to that person. Say hello. I walk in a place and I feel the vibe of a place. I'm the type of person because I'm an empath, if you're my friend and you're like, oh, you know, I'm good, I'm doing great, but I can look at you and I can feel you. I can tell something is wrong with you. I'm an empath, I can feel you, something is off. You're not gonna lie to me and say, oh yeah, I'm okay. What's going on? Like, let's talk about it, I'm here for you. Even if you don't wanna talk and you just wanna let me know that you're going through it, I feel it. You can't, you can't if you have an empath as a friend, you can't lie to them about your emotional state because an empath is a person who is completely in tune with not only their emotions, but the emotions of others, not only their energy, but the energy of others. So as an empath, you can't lie to me about how you feel. You can't fake it in front of me. You're not, I'm not going to let you fake it. As an empath, I realized I had to leave the, the, the apartment I was in. I had a neighbor upstairs who was racist. If you guys never 
seen my face before I couldn't tell from my dialect. I'm an African-American male living in the United States of America. And this is the second time that I've mentioned race on my podcast, but we're not going to talk about race yet. We're not ready yet. My neighbor's racist. I had a, a Thanksgiving get together on Thanksgiving. Now, any person in living in the United States of America understands that Thanksgiving get togethers create what? Energy, they create noise, right? I had about 15 people over, which I mean, that's a lot of people, but no, it's about 15 people over. I want you to know that on my Thanksgiving, I didn't even serve alcohol. I served tea. Nobody was drunk. There was no, you know, super turn up party. It was adults and the kids that were there. I want to say I had a seven year old, a nine year old, and a, a seven year old. I think it was three kids. Now, these kids, they are, you know, coloring. They're not ripping and running through the house because there, there just wasn't space like that. So they're coloring, they're drawing in notebooks, playing Monopoly. These kids are like well behaved kids. You know, typically when we think of kids, we may think of unruly, loud, you know, wild and crazy kid type kids. That's not the. That's not the type of kids that were at this Thanksgiving. It was good energy. The adults range from age range from probably 25 to about 55. So it was a mature crowd, you know? So, you know, we're not having like college dorm frat parties. We're just enjoying Thanksgiving with family. Um, it's about 9.30 and I'm just like, hey everybody, you know, time to wind it down, uh, you know? Start heading out. People start heading out. By 10 o'clock, there's four people left in the apartment. Two of them live there. Two of them are guests. Now, there's no music playing, okay? There's no dancing. There's no darts. There's no bowling. There's no football. There's not even a TV on because there was nothing to watch. We were just talking. Four people at 10 p.m. All of a sudden. So I, I look around. Get another knock on the door. I said, damn, somebody's knocking at the door. So, of course, I'm thinking it's someone who had just left. Like, maybe they left something. Somebody left a purse. Somebody left a wallet. You know how that goes. Somebody left something. Get to the door. It's Scottsdale Police. So, uh, I don't open the door. Now, don't quote me on this because I'm not a police officer. But this is what I believe I have read or heard before. don't know if this is true. But I don't open the door to my house for the police unless they have a warrant to come in. I didn't open the door. I went up to the peephole and keep in mind, I'm not a troublemaker. I'm not into making trouble. I don't, I don't break the law. So I don't necessarily have a problem opening the door for the police. I just don't see the point in doing it if I don't have to, if that makes sense. Not to be defiant, not to not cooperate because you definitely want to cooperate uh, with the police, but I just didn't see the point in opening the door. So I go up to the door and I'm like, yes, sir. How may I help you? And I look at the guy and I told you I'm an empath so I can read his energy. He's pissed. He's pissed because he's wasting his time. Yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Yeah, I just got a call that there was a little noise. Can you just turn it down? Have a good night. Happy Thanksgiving. He said it. <laughs> he said it in such a sarcastic, like... Jeez, I can't believe they called me for this tone. That was his his tone. They're wasting my time. That was his tone. Underneath, no big deal, right? No big deal that she called the police. This wasn't the first time that she called the police. There was a time where we were on the patio talking and she called the police. She would go to the front office and complain about everything, everything. And I'm not even gonna mention any of the other things that she's done. I'm not gonna mention her inconsistencies with when the white neighbors across the way would have parties with 20 people, literally Sunday fun day parties, Saturday night at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., parties turning up, you know, people on the stairs screaming. She never called the police on them, but she would call the police on me on Thanksgiving. Thanks on the freaking holiday. Then I had a neighbor move in downstairs who they they must have gotten sound equipment from <laughs> from Travis Scott and Kanye West or something because the speaker system they had was out of this world. I was sitting in my house one day. This is after Thanksgiving. And I'm meditating. Of all things, I'm meditating. So um, while I was doing this meditation, it was completely silent. 
I'm meditating. Next thing I know, I feel my whole body shaky. <laughs> no, I was not having a seizure and we, we don't get earthquakes like that in Arizona. The base was shaking the entire floor and every piece of furniture that was in my apartment was shaking. Mind you, I was meditating. So it went from silent to hip hop concert. So I'm just sitting here thinking like, okay, I'm gonna focus, like I'm gonna focus through this and I'm gonna meditate through this and I'm going to get to, to that uh, supreme level of focus in Nirvana. No, no, didn't happen, did not happen. Now what I realized was this was a common behavior. They would come home every day at 5.15, 5.45, 5.30 or whatever in that time frame, walk right in and blast the music. It wouldn't be a song, it would be a concert. It would go on for hours. Coupled that with, there was another neighbor who had two dogs. It sounded like two dogs, at least two dogs, maybe more, I'm, I'm guessing two. These dogs would have, I mean, they would be serenading each other throughout the day. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I got this lady above me, I got the concert underneath me, and then right next to me, I have literally, it sounds like a dog kennel. Now to understand how this, okay, so that's already apartment living, right? But then you have to understand that I am a creative entrepreneur. My job is to be creative. My job is to go into my mind and process thoughts and ideas and turn it into content that other people can benefit from. How do you think I write a book? This book has 295 pages. How do you think that's achievable? My podcasts are lengths of 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. I post every day on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I do email blast. I speak in different cities. Like, how do you think that's possible? That's possible because I take time every day to sit with myself, to sit with my own thoughts, to figure out, okay, what's going on? What, what can I do to create something today that will benefit someone? I need a, a lot of silence. Do that. I need a lot of silence. Or it doesn't even have to be silence. It just needs to be a comfortable environment. That environment was not comfortable. And that's why I'm saying it was, it became toxic. It became a toxic environment because I was not comfortable in my own home where I was paying $1,500 in rent. I was not comfortable in my own home. I could not study. I could not read. I could not do my yoga. I could not focus. I couldn't even sleep sometimes. My sleep pattern was horrible there. And we know that sleep is valuable to health. So I'm in a space where not only can I not be creative, which is literally my livelihood, it's how I eat, it's how I pay bills off of my own creativity, that now I can't even sleep. And we know that you need sleep to be creative. You, you can't you can't be creative, in my opinion. You cannot be creative on four hours of sleep every day. You need to get full night's rest, full night's sleep. It was a great decision. I left, ended up breaking the lease, which, you know, you have to pay money to do that. So let me just give you a timeline of what happened that led me up until making this podcast, okay? I'm going to make this quick, so follow me. So Thanksgiving happens, and this it's that's kind of like the genesis of when all this stuff started happening. So then every day there's a battle in the apartment for... Uh, we'll just call it noise supremacy. Who can be louder? These people are trying to be louder. This person wants to be louder. This person making a complaint. And all I wanted to do was just focus on my work. So now I was like, you know what? I got to leave. So I'm going to coffee shops every day to do my work. And eventually it gets to the point where you're asking yourself, why am I vacating my home? Why do I have to leave my home to do things that I want to do in my home? That's just weird. I have to leave my home to live my life? That's that's no one deserves that. Everyone deserves, in my opinion, to go to a home that they like, a home that grows them, a home that nourishes them, a home that gives them good energy, a home that allows them to relax, a home that uh, is inspiring to them. You don't want to go to a home you hate. You don't want to go to a home that makes you hate life. You want to go to a home that feels good. You want to go to a home that gives you good energy and encouragement. And sometimes you have to leave your home to create a new home. Sometimes you have to just leave your home to create a new home. And is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's not easy to do it. But sometimes it's the only necessary thing you can do to save yourself, to make sure you can have a happy life. I mean, or you can suffer and, and stay in these spaces that are not home, but you call it home and you pay to be in an environment that sucks. I don't know. I know life is tough and I know people are in uh, tough situations and I'm compassionate to everyone's situation. But 
at the end of the day, I don't think it's realistic to actually like your home. I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation. I think it's a realistic expectation to like your home, to love your home, to get value out of your home, to be inspired by your home. You're paying money to be there, so why not be happy? So finally, I just said enough is enough. Let's uh, let's let's break this lease. Let's get up out of here. So I, so break the lease. Find a new place. You know how it is when you find a new place. You got to pay this up front. You got to pay for this. You you got this deposit. So there's a, you know all this money being paid. Okay, now the actual energy and process of moving. Okay, let me move. Keep in mind, while I'm moving, I'm writing my Free Your Energy book. I, and I started my Free Your Energy podcast. I'm in the booth, which is in this studio, man. I'm in the booth recording my audio book. Not to mention hitting the gym six days a week while maintaining all my friendship, while maintaining my relationship. It, it got to be overwhelming. It got to be too much. It got to be too much. I had too much on my plate. It was, it was causing me stress. It's causing me stress because I had a deadline. Now, I have my own publishing company. I am my own publishing company. I have seven books. I put all my books out when I wanted to put them out. But every single book, I've given myself a deadline when I started writing a book. I said, I want to be finished at this point. All seven books. Now, this book, the Free Your Energy book, I wanted my deadline to be January 1st. I missed my deadline. Now, is it a big deal that I missed my deadline? It's not a big deal because... What has happened since is teaching me a lot, and that's going into that information is going into the book, so it's really going to help the reader, help the listener, it's going to help you. But when you have a writing career that starts in 2012 and you never miss a deadline, and then you miss a deadline because of the unruliness that was going on in your home and the dysfunction that had nothing to do with actually in your home, it was the dysfunction around you because it was apartment living, that it pissed me off. It just fucking pissed me off, man. I take so much pride in my work. And for me to miss a deadline, the first deadline in my writing career, it just pisses me off because I feel like I deserve better than that. I deserve to be in spaces that inspire me. I've worked too hard to be in places that are toxic, that don't fulfill me. I deserve to be in places that inspire me. I deserve to be in places that allow me to do my work. I deserve to be in places that heal me and encourage me. I never want to be in another toxic home, ever. So. It really just pissed me off that I was not able to finish my work. And I had to really teach myself over the last, uh, what is this, March, February. I had to really teach myself over the last two months that it's okay that I didn't hit the deadline. I had to teach myself that I just need to have a little bit of patience. And I had to teach myself that the anger I felt was okay, but I can't hold on to it because it's not going to help me in the long run. I had to teach myself that the pain I was feeling going through, although justified and although although justified doesn't matter in the grand scheme of life. And that once I dealt with that pain and once I dealt with that anger, that I just needed to let it go. That's what I told myself. That's my message to you too. You know, if you're dealing with this pain, you're dealing with the ups and downs of life if possible, you gotta learn when to let go. So I pay all of that stuff, I get moved into my apartment um, I last year I bought a new car. I bought a, a 2013 Infiniti uh, G37. I've had the car for like six months, seven months. I'm driving to yoga. This, the car is doing this. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like this is crazy. What is going on? I go to yoga. I do my yoga. I hit my namaste, <laughs> and then I I made an appointment bef before uh, the yoga class while I was driving there. At Amco, I said, hey, I want to bring my car in. The transmission is still in something weird. Something, you know, it's a pretty new car. So they're like, yeah, no problem. Bring it in. So I leave yoga. Uh, and just so you know, on the timeline, this is after I've already moved into the new apartment. So I'm driving to Amco after yoga. All of a sudden, I get to Amco. I always reverse in. I always back in to my parking spot. So I get, I'm get, i getting ready to reverse in. When I went to go put the car in reverse, it stopped. It didn't, it didn't click into reverse. So it's just sitting there idle for like four or five seconds. And then all of a sudden the car just like jerked and like jerked into reverse mode. And then I backed into the uh, parking spot and I'm just looking and I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Like what's going on with the car? So long story short, I go in there, we, we talk, blah, 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 blah. $4,000 I have to pay, new transmission. New transmission, I guess my coolant and my radiator fluid mixed somehow created some type of toxicity in the engine and my transmission is a goner. I pay $4,000 cash. This is just after I moved, right? I pay $4,000 cash to the Amco people. So I get my car back on a Saturday. 
I drive the car Saturday, I drive the car Sunday. Monday morning, I get up at 4 a.m., so I go to the gym. I go to the gym, I'm doing my thing. I leave the gym, it's like 7.30, 8 a.m. Monday morning. All of a sudden, my car is doing this. So now I'm like, what is that? So you know when stuff starts happening, you turn the, <laughs> you turn the radio down because you want to listen. I'm like, what is that? I have a flat tire. No big deal. Flat tires always happen, right? I get out. It's cold, too. You know when you leave the gym, you got the sweat going and everything. Some morning, you know, that morning dew, so you know it's cold. I'm changing my tire on the side of the road. I put the spare on there, and I'm feeling good. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I haven't had to change the tire in a while, but I did it. My energy is free because I know how to do this. You know, I was happy. And then I try to drive off, and then all of a sudden I hear, pop! I'm like, what the? I get out of the car, the freaking spare busted right there. As soon as I tried to drive, the spare busted. So I just started laughing. <laughs> I'm just like, oh man, my life over the last couple of months here, like is, you know, it's like, it's almost like, like something's trying to teach me something or, or there's a lesson that I'm supposed to be learning from all of this. Now, I can't tell you that I know what that lesson is. Maybe it's patience. Maybe I don't know yet. I'm still trying to I'm just introspecting with you guys. I'm still trying to figure it out. Long story short, take it to get it to Amco, buy new two new tires. It's another three hundred dollars. So in the month of February, I spent about five hundred five thousand dollars that I had no intention of spending that was out of my savings account that I was supposed to be saving for an emergency. Now, this stuff was all an emergency. So I guess that's the beautiful thing about having a savings account is that you can go to it when you do have an emergency. I say all the little stories to say this. You have similar stories right now that you're going through. The stories that we tell ourselves that we're experiencing are simply stories. And we have to remember that. And if you remember how stories work, there's always a beginning. There's always an end. There's always a middle. And in that middle, that's where the conflict builds up. So remember, while you're telling yourself these stories about your life, you're building up the conflict or you're experiencing the conflict being built up. But you have to remember that this story is going to eventually end. I mean, the whole story of life is going to eventually end, but this current story will eventually end and you'll be on to a new story. So if you're on to a story right now that is not the best, it's not what you love, it's not what you like, just understand that not only will this story end, but a new one will begin. And you do have the power to cultivate and create a new story, a new story that you love, a new story that you like. I want to read to you another quote from the book care package this quote from the book care package really means a lot to me because it empowers me to remember that when i'm going through pain or going through a tough time i have more power than i realize the quote reads like this the pain that came to you is not always a choice but keeping it on you is forgive stop the obsessive thinking related to it and allow the pain to fade away. And that's what we do have to remember, that we don't always choose the pain that we experience. We don't. Sometimes things literally happen to us, and that's okay. But we do have a lot of personal responsibility and choice around how we allow that pain to keep on us, how we allow it to affect us and impact us. And that's what we have to remember. 